Hello everyone, welcome to the course uh, Expansive Soil. Today will be the 15th lecture and this will be the module 5 of this course. Uh, with continuing this swelling and shrinkage characteristics of expansive soil, today we will be learning about how to measure the different uh, parameters or the shrinkage characteristics of soil. When we talk about uh, different parameters which we need to measure during a shrinkage test, then we have to think about the 5 different parameters. These 5 different parameters are the shrinkage limit, the linear shrinkage, the radial shrinkage, volumetric shrinkage and the shrinkage curve. These 5 factors are or the 5 parameters known as the shrinkage parameters need to be determined to know the shrinkage behavior of the soil. Generally all these parameters are determined in a laboratory. So, in this lecture, we will be learning about how to determine all these parameters. But before that, I would like to explain few of these terms, few of, few of the terms I have already explained in the previous classes. So, first one is the shrinkage limit. As uh, I discussed in the earlier classes, the shrinkage limit of a soil is defined as the minimum water content at which the soil remains fully saturated. So, if we take a soil sample, say for example, in this case in here and if we air dry the soil continuously, then the volume of the soil will decrease with a decrease in the water content. But a particular stage will be reached beyond which for further drying of soil sample will not decrease the volume of the soil. So, that water content at which the volume of the soil remains constant on further drying is known as the shrinkage limit. It has another definition which says that the shrinkage limit is the water content of a soil at which if the soil is dry further, no reduction in the volume takes place. And this is the water content at which the soil will remain saturated. So, this is the minimum value of the water content at which the soil remains saturated. On drying further from this water content, the air will starts to enter and the degree of saturation starts to reduce from 100 percent and the soil not remains in saturated state, it will becomes an unsaturated soil sample. Next comes the volumetric shrinkage. It is defined as the decrease in the volume of a soil mass expressed as percentage of dry volume of the soil when the water content is reduced from any percentage to the shrinkage limit of the soil. Say for example, take the soil sample over here. Now suppose the water content of the soil is W1 and its volume is V1. Then what we will do is we will dry the soil sample. When we dry the soil sample to its shrinkage limit, the water content will reduce and at shrinkage limit the water content becomes the shrinkage limit water content and let the volume of the soil at the shrinkage limit be V2. Since uh, after reaching V2, the volume of the soil will not reduce, therefore, this V2 will be equals to the dry weight of the soil. So, V2 will be equals to Vd. Now, the volumetric shrinkage of this soil will be equals to V1 minus V2 divided by V2 into 100 or which will be equals to V1 minus Vd by Vd into 100. Vd is the dry volume of the soil, V1 is the initial volume of the soil from which the drying takes place. This water content can be any value that can be liquid limit value that can be in situ water content value. The volumetric shrinkage Vs will be equals to the initial volume of the soil sample minus the final volume divided by the dry volume of the soil and it is expressed in terms of percentage. So, it has to be multiplied with 100. So, which will be equals to the change in the volume that is del V divided by the dry volume of the soil sample into 100. So, this is known as the volumetric shrinkage. Third one is the shrinkage ratio. Shrinkage ratio is defined as the ratio of a given change in the volume expressed as a percentage of dry volume to the corresponding change in the water content. 
and remember this change should be within this zone of shrinkage limit it should be above the zone of shrinkage limit say for example take a soil sample with an initial water content of w1 and initial volume of v1 now we will dry this soil gradually so as we dry the soil gradually the volume will decrease and the water content will decrease with the decrease in the water content the volume will also decrease now suppose at any stage the water content is w2 and corresponding volume is v2 so as far as um, uh, the definition of the shrinkage ratio it will be v1 minus v2 divided by vd divided by w1 minus w2 that means uh, if we further dry the sample the volume will decrease like this one and this is the shrinkage limit and on further drying there will be no decrease in the volume of the soil sample take place and this will be the final volume vd so the shrinkage ratio which will be defined as per the formula will be v1 minus v2 divided by vd whole divided by the water content corresponds to v1 volume minus the water content corresponds to v2 volume so that means v1 minus v2 divided by vd whole divided by w1 minus w2 so this is the shrinkage ratio of the soil suppose uh, in second stage that means uh, if the v2 equals to vd that means at shrinkage limit volume and then the corresponding water content w2 will be equals to the ws so in that case the shrinkage ratio will be equals to v1 minus vd divided by vd whole divided by w1 minus w2 will be equals to ws now we know that this is equals to vs so we can replace that one vs by w1 minus ws so shrinkage ratio can be equals to this so you can see here the shrinkage ratio sr will be equals to the volumetric shrinkage divided by w1 minus ws w1 is the water content at the initial stage ws is the shrinkage limit water content next linear shrinkage of the soil if we dry a soil sample then its dimensions will also change the linear shrinkage tells uh, tells about the change in uh, the linear strain of the soil sample due to drying going by the definition the linear shrinkage is expressed as a percentage decrease in the length of the soil mass due to drying to the initial length at a water content equals to its liquid limit so here you can see a soil sample has been taken with a length of l1 the linear dimension is l1 and its initial water content is uh, approximately liquid limit water content or little bit 2-3% higher than the liquid limit water content then we will dry the soil sample uh, I will explain about this uh, test later on so after drying completely the length of the soil sample will decrease at dry state the length of the soil sample will be say ld then the linear shrinkage will be equals to initial length that is l minus the final length that will be ld divided by the initial length of the soil sample and this is expressed in terms of percentage so it will be into 100 or this will be the change in the length of the soil sample that is del l divided by initial length into 100 so this is known as the linear shrinkage of a soil sample next radial shrinkage as the name suggests the change in the the diameter of the soil sample due to drying is known as the radial shrinkage so going by the definition the radial shrinkage is expressed as the percentage decrease in the diameter of a soil sample due to drying to its initial diameter at a water content equals to or little bit higher than its liquid limit water content here we can see a soil sample is there a circular soil sample with a initial diameter is d and initial water content is 
approximately equals to liquid limit or little bit higher than the liquid limit. Once we dry the soil sample, its volume will decrease as the soil shrink, the volume will decrease and so the diameter of the soil sample will decrease. Finally, when the soil becomes fully dry, let the diameter of the soil sample be d d. So, this d st small d stands for the dry soil sample diameter. Then the radial shrinkage will be equals to the initial diameter of the soil sample that is d minus the final diameter that is d d divided by the initial diameter d. And again this is expressed in terms of percentage. So, multiply with 100. So, that will be the change in the diameter that is del d divided by d into 100. So, this gives the, the radial shrinkage of a soil sample. That means, how the soil is shrinking in a radial direction due to drying. Another most uh, important parameters or maybe you can see a relationship between the soil water content and void ratio or volume of the soil during drying can be obtained using a shrinkage curve. So, shrinkage curve shows a relationship between the void ratio or the volume of the soil sample with the change in the water content due to drying. So, remember this drying should be gradually that means it should be air dried. A mathematical representation of the shrinkage curves provides a relationship between the volume and mass of the constitutive surface in response to an increase in the soil suction. Generally, this is the one of the most uh, important characteristics of a soil sample during the drying stage. So, in this class we will be learning how to determine the shrinkage curve for various soils. Now, how to determine the different shrinkage parameters in the laboratory? There are various methods available in the laboratory to determine the shrinkage parameters. First of all, the shrinkage limit. Generally, in India we determine the shrinkage limit as far as IS 2720 part 6, uh, this is given in 1972 and this is also known as mercury displacement method. So, what we have to do is you need to take a soil sample about 30 gram which should be passing through 425 micron sieve size. Then we need to add sufficient amount of water such that the soil will become a paste and generally the water content will be approximately its liquid limit. Then we need to take shrinkage disc here we can see these are the shrinkage disc. Then we need to coat the shrinkage disc inside with a layer of silicon grease such that the soil will not be adhered or not be attached with the clay surface while drying. Then once we coat the soil with a layer of silicon grease, then we need to take the weight of this shrinkage disc and then we need to measure the volume of the shrinkage disc. The volume of the shrinkage disc can be measured by mercury displacement method. Here what we will do is, we will fill this empty shrinkage disc with mercury and remove the excess amount of mercury. Then we measure the weight of this mercury which are filled inside this shrinkage disc and from that we can determine the volume of the shrinkage disc. So, once the volume and weight of the shrinkage disc is measured, then we need to fill shrinkage disc with the soil sample. We need to fill the soil samples in layer such that there will be no air bubble formed inside the soil sample. So, for that we need to tap this uh, shrinkage disc while placing the soil sample. So, we need to fill the shrinkage disc with the soil paste in layers by tapping to prevent the presence of any entrapped air. Once the soil sample is filled inside the shrinkage disc, then we will measure its uh, weight. The volume of this shrinkage disc will be the volume of this soil sample. So, now we know the initial volume of the soil sample and initial weight of the soil sample. Then once uh, the shrinkage disc uh, weight and volume is measured, then we will air dry the soil sample and that will be followed by 
drying at 105 to 110 degrees centigrade inside an oven for 24 hours. Once the soil is fully dry, then we will take out this soil pad. So, this soil cake is known as soil pad. So, we need to take out the soil pad and then we need to measure its weight. So, we will be knowing the weight of this dry soil pad. Then we need to determine the volume of this dry soil pad. To do that, we need a evaporating dish. You can see this one, this is an evaporating dish. Then we need to take a glass cup and then we need to fill this glass cup with mercury. And then we put this dried soil pad over here and then we will push this soil, dry soil pad using a glass plate with a prongs. Then once the soil is go inside, the excess amount of mercury will be spilled over here. Then we need to take this excess amount of mercury and then we measure the weight of this excess amount of mercury or spilled over mercury. That weight of the mercury will give the volume of this dry soil pad. When we divide the weight by the density of the mercury, then we will get the volume of this mercury which will be equals to the volume of this soil dry pad. This is known as the determination of volume of the soil by mercury displacement method. So, this is an indirect method of determination of volume of this soil pad. Once we know the initial water content which will be no, known to us before the testing, we will be know, knowing the volume of the pad, the weight pad that is means here this one is the volume of the initial weight pad. Then we will be knowing the volume of the dry weight pad. So, this is the volume of the dry weight pad which we will get from mercury displacement method. Then we will be knowing the weight of the oven dried soil pad by measuring the weight of this soil sample. After knowing all this parameter, we can use this equation W minus V minus V0 divided by W0 into 100, where W is the initial water content, V is the volume of the weight pad, V0 is the volume of the dry soil pad, W0 is the weight of the oven dried soil pad into 100. So, that will give us the shrinkage limit of the soil. However, there is uh, some uh, demerits of this uh, test that is on the using of mercury. Since mercury is hazardous, it is not recommended to use the mercury and therefore, the ASTM standard has now suggesting to use the uh, water displacement method. So, this is the ASTM standard which use the water displacement method to determine the volume of the soil. Again, the procedure is almost identical. We need to take a dry soil pad. Then instead of using mercury, here the dry soil pad will be immersed into a molten wax such that a layer of wax will be coated around the soil sample. Now, here we have to be careful that uh, there should not be any entrapped air while dipping the soil sample into the molten wax and also the uh, layer of the wax should be very th thin. The procedure is if we see it is almost identical to Indian standard method. We need to take around 30 gram of soil sample which should be passing through 425 micron and then we need to add with the water to prepare a paste and the water contained will be approximately its liquid limit. Then we need to measure its empty weight. Then we need to take shrinkage disk and its empty weight and empty volume will be measured. Then it will be coated inside with a layer of silicon grease to prevent the addition of the soil sample. Then this uh, shrinkage disk will be filled with the soil paste in layers by tapping to prevent the presence of any entrapped air. Then we need to measure the weight of the shrinkage disk along with the soil sample. Then we will dry the soil. First it will be air dried, then it will be oven dried at 105 to 115 degrees centigrade. Once uh, the soil is fully dried, then we need to measure the weight of the shrinkage disk along with the dry soil pad. Then once the soil is dry, you can see this is a dry soil pad, then it will be immersed in a 
molten wax such that a coat of wax will cover the soil sample. Then we will cool down the soil sample. After that, the weight of the soil pad along with the wax will be measured. Then this soil sample will be immersed in water and the displaced amount of water will be taken and its volume will be or weight will be measured. So, that displaced amount of water will be equals to the volume of the dry soil. So, the method is almost identical with the Indian standard. Only thing is instead of mercury method, here it uses the water and the volume of the mercury which was taken earlier as the volume of this dry soil pad here will be replaced by the volume of the water which are getting displaced due to the immersion of the dry soil pad coated with wax. So, this gives us about the weight of the dry soil pad and the volume of the dry soil pad with wax. Once we know the volume and weight of the dry soil pad with the wax, these are the different steps to calculate the shrinkage limit. The mass of the dry soil pad ms will be equals to mass of the dry soil pad and the shrinkage disk md minus mass of the shrinkage disk m. Then mass of the water displaced by a dry soil pad and wax mwsx will be equals to mass of the dry soil pad and wax in air minus mass of the dry soil pad and wax in water. Then the volume of the dry soil pad and the wax vdx will be equals to mws mwsx divided by rho w where rho w is the unit weight of water. Then mass of the wax mx will be equals to mass of the dry soil pad and wax in air msx a minus mass of the dry soil pad ms. Then the volume of the wax vx will be equals to mx divided by gx into rho w where gx is the specific gravity of the wax. Then the volume of the dry soil pad vd will be equals to the volume of the dry soil pad and wax that is vdx minus the volume of the wax vx. So, volume of the wax we can get from here. Then the shrinkage limit will be equals to w which is the initial water content minus v minus vd into rho w divided by ms into 100. So, this is the different steps uh, which we need to follow to determine the shrinkage limit as far as the ASTM standard is concerned. Once we determine the shrinkage limit, then there are various factors which we can also determine. One is the shrinkage index uh, which is defined as the plasticity limit minus the shrinkage limit. Then we can determine the shrinkage ratio, SR will be equals to weight of the open dry soil that is in gram divided by the volume of the open dry soil pad in milliliter. Then we can determine the volumetric shrinkage which will be equals to the initial moisture content W0 in percentage minus the shrinkage limit uh, which will be WS in percentage this multiply into the shrinkage ratio that is W0 minus WS into the shrinkage ratio that will give the volumetric shrinkage. So, these three parameters we can determine once we know the shrinkage limit of the soil. Next is the shrinkage curve. In all those uh, experiments, uh, generally the volume of the soil we were measuring at a single point that is at shrinkage limit and also at initial stage. But in order to determine the shrinkage curve, we need to measure the volume at different time interval and also at different water content and different void ratio. So, here we can see in order to determine a shrinkage curve of this soil sample, we need to determine the water content and void ratio and the volume of the soil at point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, point 0.5, point 0.6, 7 and 8. Uh, therefore, we need to measure these um, parameters at different uh, time interval as, as well as at different water content up to the soil becomes fully dry. Then we can draw a curve between the void ratio or the volume of the soil with 
the water content to get the shrinkage curve. In two way we can do that. Either we can take a soil sample at initial stage 1 and we will gradually dry the soil sample to get the different water content, different volume and different void ratio until the soil is fully dry. Or we can take several soil samples and we start to gradually dry the soil samples and at different time interval we need to pick up one one soil sample and it's, we can measure it the volume of the soil and the water content at different time interval so that we can get a shrinkage curve. But the problem is uh, we, for that we need a large number of soil samples. So therefore we can either we can uh, take a soil single soil sample and gradually dry it or we can take large number of soil samples dry it and different time interval we can take out the soil sample and we can uh, measure its weight and volume. Remember while measuring the volume of the soil sample or the weight of the soil sample if you use mercury method or water displacement method that sample cannot be used further for drying the soil sample. So therefore if you if we are using the mercury displacement method or water displacement method then we need to have several soil samples to get the shrinkage curve. However, if we are going by some other method which will give us uh, the water content and volume at different time interval, we can use that method. I will talk about uh, those things later on. So, but the shrinkage curve we can get by drying the soil sample gradually and measuring its weight, volume and void ratio during the drying. Another uh, test uh, we need to do is the linear shrinkage. The objective of this test is to determine the linear shrinkage of a demolded soil the, as far as IS method is concerned. This is a linear shrinkage apparatus which is a length of around 125 mm and a width of 25 mm and this depth is around 10 mm. To do that test we need to take a soil sample passing through 425 micron sieve and with an initial water contained 2 percent above the liquid limit. Then we need to fill that soil sample inside this mold and we need to do that uh, slowly in layers such that uh, there should not be any entrapped air present inside the soil sample and to do that we need to gradually tap the soil sample. Once the soil is filled or this mold is filled by the soil sample then we need to dry the soil sample. How to do that? This uh, drying should be take place gradually. First the soil will be air dried until the soil shrunk such that it will not adhere to the wall of this mold. Once that is achieved then the soil will be dried at a temperature of 60 to 65 degrees centigrade till the shrinkage stops that means still still we reach the uh, shrinkage uh, limit water contained. Once we reach up to this point then further drying can take place uh, inside an oven at 105 to 110 degrees centigrade to complete the drying of the soil. Once the soil is fully dried you can see this is a fully dried soil sample we can measure the length of the soil. So the linear shrinkage we can obtain using this equation. That means the linear shrinkage will be equals to 1 minus the length of the open dried soil sample let that is be LD. So here this is LD divided by the initial soil sample which will be the length of this mold into 100. So using this equation we can obtain the linear shrinkage of the soil. So this is given by IS2720 in part 20. There is another method, uh, uh, another way or another shrinkage parameters that is known as coefficient of linear extensibility and popularly known as coal method. In this method, the objective of this method is to determine the linear strain of an undisturbed, unconfined soil sample on drying from an initial state of 5 psi which will be equivalent, equivalent to 33 kPa of suction to a oven dry condition 
which will be approximately a suction value of 150,000 PSI which will be 1000 MPa. So, in this method soil will be dried from initial state of 5 PSI of suction to a open dry suction value of 150,000 PSI or 1000 MPa. Once the soil is dried then we need to measure its uh, density or we need to measure its volume. So, that can be obtained by a resin method. The undisturbed soil sample will be coated with a flexible plastic resin. This resin is impermeable to liquid water, but permeable to water vapor. So, here what we have to do is um, first soil will be taken to an initial state of 5 psi or 33 kPa of suction value, then its volume and weight will be measured, then the soil sample will be oven dried and the once the soil is oven dried, its weight and volume will be measured. How can we measure this one? Using a plastic uh, or flexible plastic resin. We need to, we will be coating the soil sample inside a plastic resin and then we will immerse in a liquid and we will measure the displaced amount of liquid and from that we can measure the volume of this dried soil sample. Then the coal value can be obtained as del L by del LD which is the linear strain relative to the dry dimension which will be equals to gamma DD which is the dry density of open dry soil sample to gamma dm which will be dry density of the sample at 33 kPa whole to the power 0 0.33 minus 1. So, using this equation we can determine the coal value of the soil sample. But this method has certain disadvantage like uh, we need to bring the soil sample at an initial stage of 5 psi from that only we need to dry the soil sample. So, sometimes it is very difficult to bring the soil sample to 33 kPa exact 33 kPa water content. Therefore, it has some limited uh, usability. Another method is there that is known as cloud method that is coefficient of linear drying. This method is almost identical with this coal method, but in this method we need to measure the volume of and weight of the soil sample at different interval such that it, it can give us the shrinkage curve. This method it determines the volume change of a soil using unconfined undisturbed soil sample coated with waterproof plastic resin. So, here what we have to do is we need to take a soil sample and then we need to coat this soil sample with a plastic resin. Generally, saran resin is used. Here you can see the procedure this is a soil sample and then it is uh, hanged with a thread and then it is being immersed inside a resin. You can see this is saran resin. Once the soil is dipped inside a layer of resin will coat the soil sample. Here you can see after dipping it is the soil has been taken out. This uh, method allow us to measure the volume of the soil sample at different water content condition. So, therefore, once the soil is uh, coated with uh, the resin, then the soil will be taken out and it will be dried. Once this resin gets dried, it will act as a flexible membrane and it will keep intact the soil fabrics and the soil fiber. So, the soil fabrics and the fiber will not go any change during this drying process. Then uh, the resin is essentially a waterproof when it is exposed to liquid for a short time, but it permeates gradual water vapor flow to and from the soil sample. Therefore, when we dip the soil sample inside the water to measure its volume, the water will not go inside the soil and we can measure the volume of the soil. Once we measure the volume, then we will take out the soil sample and then again uh, the soil can be dried further because this uh, resin will permit the flow of water or flow of moisture 
from to and from the soil sample so the soil can be dried so therefore this is if this is a soil sample now in the first stage we have to coat the soil sample with a resin and then we need to dip inside the water and measure the displaced volume of the water since this resin is a waterproof when inside the water no water can enter into the soil sample then we can measure the volume of the soil and weight of the soil then we will take out the soil sample and then we will dry it again since the resin allow the outward movement of the moisture the soil can dry further then again at different location different time interval we will take out the soil sample and again we will dip inside the water and measure its volume so we can get v1 w1 w2 v2 w3 v3 at different location with using a single soil sample therefore we can uh, draw a shrinkage curve using this method the advantage of this method is the volume of the soil sample of any shape can be measured by weighing the soil clod while it is submerged un under water on a balance so th therefore we we can measure the volume of the soil sample of any shape using this clod method from the clod method we can determine the clod index you can see this is a shrinkage curve this is for 100 percent saturation line this is the for line when the the uh, degree of saturation less than 100 percent so this is a curve a drying curve now if we take the slope of this curve that is known as the clot index cw which is equals to del e divided by del w so if you this is w2 this is w1 this is e2 and this is e1 clot index will be equals to e1 minus e2 divided by w1 minus w2 so clot index will tell us about the rate at which the shrinkage is taking place inside the soil sample so these are the different uh, methods um, by which we can measure the different shrinkage parameters in the laboratory next is uh, how to measure all the shrinkage parameters the various properties of soil needs to be measured for determination of shrinkage parameters are water content bulk density dry density and the void ratio water content of the soil will be measured by measuring the weight of the soil before and after drying similarly the bulk density can be measured by taking the weight and the volume of the soil before drying so this will give us the initial bulk density the dry density we can measure by measuring the weight and the volume of the soil after drying inside the oven then void ratio can be determined by measuring the weight and volume of the soil sample before and after the drying and also during the drying so in all these parameters we need to measure two things the weight and the volume of the soil sample it's very easy to measure the weight because weight can be measured using a weighing balance however it's very difficult to measure the volume of the soil sample because in order to measure the volume of the soil sample directly we cannot measure the volume therefore we have to go through some displacement method whether that is a water displacement method or mercury displacement method but if we use uh, uh, direct uh, if we take a dry sample and if we insert inside the water then the soil water will enter into the soil and the soil will get collapsed the world will get collapsed therefore we need to coat the soil sample using wax or resin or indirectly we can measure the volume of the soil sample by measuring its linear dimensions so that i will discuss here the first one is the mercury displacement method so in this uh, i will explain about how to measure the volume of the soil sample since it's easy to determine the weight of the soil here we will need to determine the volume of the soil so first method is the mercury displacement method as i discussed earlier indian standard 
has suggested this method. This is an indirect way of measuring the volume of the soil. This is uh, we can measure by measuring the displaced amount of the mercury when we dipped a dry soil pad into a glass filled with mercury. Here we need to take a shrinkage disc, then we will fill that shrinkage disc with the soil as I discussed earlier, then we will allow the soil to dry. So, during the drying, this is suppose at any stage after drying, it is after shrinkage, the soil got shrink and you can see it the volume has decreased. So, this is a soil pad, then we need to determine its weight and volume. Weight can be measured using, using a weighing balance, then we need to measure the volume. Now, as I told you, we cannot dip the soil into the water directly to measure its volume. Therefore, we need to take the help of mercury. Mercury we can use because the mercury is a heavy metal and it cannot go into the soil pores and it cannot disturb the soil and also it will not stick to the glass. So, therefore, it will be easier to measure the volume of the soil correctly. So, here we have to take a evaporating disc, then we have to take a glass plate, then we have to fill this glass plate with mercury and remove the excess amount of mercury. Then we will dip this dried soil pad due to dipping or immersing this soil pad, the excess amount of mercury will come out and fall on this evaporating disc. This excess amount of mercury will then be taken and its weight will be measured. So, this weight of mercury will be used to know the or calculate the volume of the mercury. So, the volume of the mercury will be equals to the volume of this dry soil pad. Therefore, the volume of the soil pad V will be equals to the weight of the mercury displaced divided by the density of the mercury. Another method is uh, the vernier caliper method. So, this is uh, one of the direct method of measuring. The advantage of this method is we can measure the volume of the soil sample at different stage of drying to obtain a shrinkage curve. In a mercury displacement method, once this soil is used for determination of the volume at using mercury displacement method, then we cannot reuse the soil sample further. Therefore, we cannot use this soil for further drying or to obtain a shrinkage curve. Hence, we have to go with the vernier caliper method. V vernier caliper method allow us to measure the volume of the soil sample at different stages of drying. Here you can see soil sample is drying at different uh, interval and correspondingly we are measuring the volume of the soil at different time interval and th from that we can determine the void ratios. In this method what we have to do is uh, we have to take a vernier caliper and then we have to take the soil sample for which uh, we need to measure the volume. Then we need to determine the diameter of the soil sample at 5 or 7 different locations. Since during the drying, the drying process may not be uniform. Therefore, we have to take uh, the 5, 6 location to determine the diameter of the soil sample. And from that, we need to calculate average diameter. Similarly, we have to take height of the soil sample at 5 or 7 different locations. And then we have to, we can calculate average height of the soil sample. Once we know the average diameter and average height, we can calculate the volume of the soil using this formula. Then again we can allow the soil to dry and again after few time interval we can measure the volume. So, using a single soil specimen we can obtain different values of vo volume of the soil at different time interval to obtain the shrinkage curve. So, these are the few of the procedures to obtain the shrinkage curve. The step one is uh, determination of the initial weight and volume and water content of the soil that is before drying. From all this parameter that is initial weight, volume, water content, we can calculate the bulk unit weight. 
we will be knowing the water content, EDCL water content, from that we can calculate the dry unit weight and using the relationship uh, E equals to G rho W by rho D minus 1, we can calculate the initial void ratio of the soil sample. Then we can calculate the mass of soil solid that is MS which will be equals to the dry density rho D which can which we can get from here and multiplying with the volume of the soil. So, before the shrinkage starts we can get all these parameters the initial void ratio, initial bulk density, initial dry density and the weight of the sol soil solid. In the second stage the soil will be allowed to dry air dry gradually and dif at different interval we can measure the weight of the soil and the volume of the soil. The volume of the soil can be measured as I explained to you earlier by measuring the height and diameter at 6, 7 different locations and then taking the average height and uh, diameter. Then from this uh, weight and volume we can obtain the bulk unit weight at any interval time t equals which will be equals to rho t which will be equals to mass of the soil sample at any time t divided by volume of the soil sample at time t. Then we can calculate the loss of water due to drying at any times t which will be equals to del m t which will be equals to the initial weight of the soil sample minus the weight after time t. So, this difference will give us the change in the weight of the soil sample. Since the soil mass is changing only because of the uh, evaporation of the water, so that will be equals to loss of water due to drying del m t. Then the water contained at any time t can be obtained by using the equation w i which will be initial water contained minus del m t that is the loss of water divided by m s which is the mass of the solid into 100. So, this will give us the water contained of the soil at any time t. Then we can calculate the dry unit weight at any time t will be equals to rho d t which will be equals to the bulk density at any time t divided by 1 plus w t. So, rho t we can get it from here, w t we can get it from here. So, we can calculate the dry unit weight which will be rho d t. Using this rho d t we can calculate the void ratio at any time t. Therefore, by measuring the weight and volume of the soil sample during different time intervals we can get w, w t and e t. So, by this we can get w 1, e 1, w 2, e 2 that is water content and void ratio at different time interval until the shrinkage stops which will give us shrinkage curve. This is how we can measure a sample calculations has been shown in here. This is before drying. The average diameter was 7.480, average height of the sample was 2.487 then using this two we can find out the volume of the soil sample. The initial weight of the soil was 223.480 gram, initial water content was this. Then we can calculate the bulk unit weight, the dry density and the void ratio. Then the mass of the solid ms can also be determined using rho d and the volume of the soil that is here and that comes out 187.034 gram. It will remain constant throughout. Then during drying at any st stage let the diameter is uh, average diameter is 7.337, average height is 2.428, then this is the volume of the soil sample, then weight will be taken which will comes out 208.2, then we can calculate water content using this equation the loss of water during drying will be 223.480 using this two we can calculate that is uh, 223.480 minus 208.2 that is 15.28 gram of the loss of water has been taking place and water content will be equals to wi which will be 
19.512 minus del M T, del M T is 15.28 divided by M S, M S is 187.034 into 100, so that will be 11.343. So, this is the water content at time T. Then we can calculate the bulk density, then the dry density and from the bulk density and water content relationship, we can calculate the void ratio. So, this is how we can obtain the water content and void ratio at different time interval. This is one of the example I have shown here. The weight has been measured at different uh, time interval. The diameter, this is the average diameter at different time interval, average height, volume of the soil sample, the water content, the bulk density, the dry density and the void ratio. Now, you can use the void ratio and water content over here to plot the shrinkage curve. So, vernier caliper method is one of the most uh, simplest method for determination of the shrinkage curve and it do not need a large number of soil sample. By using 2-3 soil samples, we can measure the the shrinkage curve and we can take the average of that. However, the method is, has some limitation like uh, the measured volume of the soil will not be uniform if the drying is not uniform. So, that, that is one of the demerits uh, or limitation of the method otherwise it is very simple and easy method to determine the, the volume of the soil sample during drying. The next method is water displacement method. It is similar to the mercury displacement method, but in in place of mercury, water is used here. So, this method can be mm, carried out by using a wax coating or a resin coating method. Since the dry soil sample cannot be in, immersed into the soil, so therefore, we need to coat the soil sample using some impermeable membrane. In order to prevent the permission of the water inside the pore space of of dry soil pad, the method is carried out by the following procedure. So, first we need to take the soil sample like this one as I explained earlier. Then we dried the soil sample. So, this is a dried soil pad. Once the soil is dried, then it has to be immersed inside a molten wax. While immersing, we have to be careful that uh, only a thin layer of molten wax has been coating this soil sample. And also we have to be ensure that there is no air bubble present between the coating and the soil sample otherwise that will decrease it will change the volume or it will give some error. Once the soil is um, completely coated with the molten wax a thin layer of molten wax then the soil will be taken out and it will be allowed to dry. So, here you can see a uh, soil pad coated with a thin layer of wax. Then this uh, coated soil sample will be immersed inside a glass or beaker filled with water and as the soil is immersed, excess amount of water will be spilled out. Then this spilled out water will be taken and its weight or volume will be measured. So, that weight or the volume of the spilled water will give the volume of the dry wet pad. And the ASTM D4943 has suggested this method for determination of the shrinkage limit. So, this is the procedure by which we can measure the shrinkage limit already I have explained in the previous slides that how to determine uh, the shrinkage limit using a wax method. Next is the resin coating method. The demerits of the wax method is we cannot reuse the soil sample because um, wax is generally impermeable to water. Therefore, water cannot enter or it cannot um, leave the soil. Therefore, in order to determine the shrinkage curve, we need to have a large number of soil sample. In order to avoid that, we can use a resin coating method. So, resin coating resin coating allows the volume measurement of the soil at different moisture condition. Once the resin dries on the soil sample, it acts like a flexible membrane and it will 
contained the soil fabrics and the fiber intact. And also it will be uh, waterproof material when exposed to water for a short time. Therefore, it will prevent any ingress of water to the soil sample. However, if we allow the soil to dry, this resin will permit the gradual inflow or outflow of the water vapor from the soil sample. Thereby, the shrinking process will or drying process of the soil will take place. You can see here, this is a dry soil sample. This will be immersed inside the resin, which will be mostly saran resin can be used. And this is a resin coated pad. Then we need to take this resin coated pad and it will be immersed in a water. Then will the displaced water will be taken and its volume will be measured. Similarly, after measuring this, the soil will be taken out and again it will be allowed to dry. Since this resin will allow the outflow of vapor, the soil will dry further and again at any stage we can dip inside the water and then we can measure the spilled amount of water and to know the volume of the soil sample. And this uh, method allow us to measure the volume of the any shape of the soil sample using this uh, technique. Uh, the next method is uh, the balloon method. This is also a method which allow us to measure the volume of the soil sample at different time interval. The different steps involved in this method is um, the first one is a sample preparation, then saturation of the soil sample, then placement of the soil sample inside the balloon and then drying the sample by air pump, then measure the volume and water of the soil and then open drying the soil sample. Here we can see, so these are the different uh, balloons which are being used. And here we have the soil samples which are being dried and this is the inflow of air and this is the outflow of the air. The air will inflow into the systems to allow the soil to dry. I will explain this thing in the next slide. Here we can see this is a soil sample which is kept inside a balloon and it is connected with a inlet pipe uh, which is carrying dry air and once the dry air moves through this soil, the water will get evaporated and then this wet air will be taken out. So, due to this process, the water will get evaporated and the soil will get dried. This is the soil sample this is the wet air, this is the balloon and it will be filled with a or fitted with a rubber cork. Here you can see this is a rubber cork such that outer air cannot be entered into the system or to make a seal proof system. So, this is how. Then we need to measure the volume of the soil at different time interval. To do that, what we have to do is uh, this is uh, at suppose uh, we are drying the soil sample at any time interval we need to measure the, the weight and the volume. Then we need to take out this soil sample from this stand. Then we will keep it the soil sample over a weighing balance. So, that will give us the weight of the soil sample. Then in order to measure the volume of the soil sample, first of all we need to take out the weight of or the air which is present inside the balloon. We can use a syringe to remove the air from this uh, balloon such that the accuracy will be quite high. Then we have to take uh, a beaker filled with water and then we have to diff this uh, balloon along with the soil sample inside the water. That will then the change in the volume or the spilled amount of water will give us the volume of the soil sample inside the balloon. So, this is how we can measure the 
volume of the soil sample at different location. You can see a setup over here. So, this is a inlet air, this is outlet air, this is balloon containing soil samples and this is the soil sample inside the balloon. This is the dry air which is entering into the balloon and drying the soil and because of the evaporation the wet air is being removed here and this is a rubber cork to make this soil a so make the soil as a water tight or air tight and this is the method to determine the weight and the volume of the soil at any time interval. This is the step 1 to measure the weight of the soil W i at any stage then in step 2 we need to take a bottle then fill this one with water then in step 3 we need to immerse this balloon along with the soil sample and to measure the displaced amount of water and the weight or the volume of that displaced amount of the water will be equivalent to the volume of the soil sample over here. And remember before that we need to take out the excess amount of air present inside the balloon. This can be done using a syringe. Once this is done then again we will connect this um, soil sample with uh, inlet and outlet pipe and then again we allow to dry the soil. And again after certain time we can measure the volume and weight of the soil sample. So, that will give us water content at any time T and the void ratio at any time T. So, by knowing W1, W2 up to shrinkage limit WS similarly U1 E2 up to ES we can draw a shrinkage curve. So, this is how the volume and weight of the soil sample can be measured to determine the shrinkage curve or the shrinkage limit. So, this is the references uh, which has been used for this class. In the next class uh, I will explain you about the cyclic swelling and shrinkage behavior of the soil sample how the cyclic swelling and shrinkage takes place inside a soil and what are the different factors which controls this, uh, their values. And with this I conclude today's lecture. Thank you for your kind attention.